Hi, Scorpio, Sun, and Rising. Welcome to your May 2024 Astro Update. It's Rena here. So, what is going on in May? Well, a lot that affects you, namely because the Taurus placements are going to oppose you. And this is because Taurus is your opposite sign. Isn't that, um, you know, amazing? But yeah, I want to um, just go back to April because I'm recording this in the second week of April. So a lot of the uh, April transits haven't occurred. And a lot of you will probably hear this in April. And I just want to kind of uh, bring up the full moon in your sign on April 23rd and also talk about the um, the conjunction between Jupiter and Uranus happening in in Taurus on a April 21st a couple of days or April 20th a couple of days uh, before that actually even in May uh, Jupiter and, and uh, Uranus will still be you know right you know, very close to, to one another. It's just the official conjunction is on that particular date. Now, all of this can be things that are positive, but for some of you, because the full moon and uh, your sign on the 23rd of April will have the... Um, the sun in, in Taurus in that seventh house, that in particular could be a time of dealing specifically with relationship issues and having to look at yourself very closely because, uh, because the full moon will be in the first house. So that is, that's one of those things where these other transits in Taurus can affect you in different ways. And, and also I should say too, that, um, Gemini is your eighth house and that takes it even deeper. So, um, this is the house that you rule in astrology. So when you start having placements in the eighth house, then, um, that area gets activated and yeah, I mean, um, it's one of those things where maybe for another sign, if they have a lot of activity in the eighth house, they might be very overwhelmed by it. But for you, this is like old hat because this is what you deal with on a daily basis, really, when you think about it. Um, so, in, so I just want to um, talk about one transit at the end of April that will be definitely in play in May, which is Mars going into Aries on the 30th, because it will remain in Aries throughout the month of May going into June. Um, Aries for you is the sixth house, and the sixth house is the house of your health. It's the house of your daily routine, and it's the house of the workplace and the work that you're doing. Um, I mean, on a health level, there could be something acute, you know, Mars can be something very sudden um, that occurs, but also there could be something um, that you're implementing that has a um, physicality to it. So maybe it's like a new exercise routine, for instance. Um, and, but if it, if it has to do with workplace matters, there might even be some kind of conflict. Mars can be a conflict and this could be, um, coworkers or something. You just had an eclipse here as it was a solar eclipse, but of course eclipses themselves can mean change. So even if it seems like it is like new developments, it can also bring up things that have to be um, let go of or that are going to change for you. And so that can um, create 
instability, you could call it. And so this could be the aftermath of that eclipse. Maybe there's more competition in the workplace for some reason. On the second of the month, your ruler, Pluto, goes retrograde at two degrees of Aquarius. This is your fourth house of home and family. Now, this is um, a transit that's going to occur for 20 years. So you had Pluto in the third house, which can be your siblings, aunts, uncles, and cousins. Now it's in the fourth house, and it can be the mother. Some people say the father, so either one of the parents. Also your childhood. So... Um, <laughs> The, the Scorpio people, man, oh man, if you're old enough to have experienced both of these transits in the third and the fourth house, um, not everybody is going to have this in their lifetime. I don't think I will. <laughs> um, and therefore, this is something that can really be excavating your childhood and for Scorpios, this can actually be really good because some of you have had some really heavy things happen in the past. And even though you may um, be quite enduring and able to handle trauma, crisis after crisis, it still doesn't mean that you may be fully healed and it may spill out into your relationships, into your perceptions of life itself, you know, whether it's cynicism or suspicion, which I would say is uh, a cynicism towards other people. And in some cases, it can be a protective device. I'm not saying that uh, being suspicious uh, suspicious or on high alert about certain people isn't warranted ever. You know, um, you know, if you think about people who just kind of blindly, you know, trust people, that's not exactly, um, a good thing either because, um, you know, we have to be discerning. So anyway, now Pluto is retrograding in this area. So for those, for those of you, and there are going to be some Scorpios, maybe the majority, I don't know, who have some resentments in your childhood, and there may be certain people who I was going to say are on your shit list, but uh, I don't mean it that in such a bad way, but certainly that you are not really that thrilled about or that you still um, have trouble forgiving, whatnot. Um, this is going to be a time where you kind of bring it within yourself, meaning that rather than, you know, looking to the outer world, because even like in therapy, sometimes you'll get therapists who, who will ask you to talk about your past and then, you know, there you talk about, oh, well, I was molested by my uncle when I was, uh, you know, 12 years old. And they may go on and on about this other person. And some therapists even say, okay, you're going to confront these people and tell them what they've done. And really, um, that some of those things that these therapists are doing, it's because they are hoping, I mean, I'm assuming is that they think that it's going to somehow heal the person because they're going to get it out of themselves. And they're also, but there's always like that dream about the other person going, oh, I'm so sorry that I did that to you. And as we know, uh, people who do th things like this, it's very possible that they will deny it, that they will, uh, you know, make excuses for it if they even admit it at all, and that that the person won't won't get that payoff. So the thing that I think is, I'm not saying that you know people shouldn't do that 
it, you know, in certain circumstances, I'm just saying that you have to be, you know, very prepared for what occurs because it may not, you know, go the way that the person is hoping it will go. But what I'm saying is that we also, when we look at ourselves, and I'm talking about even when you look at the past, if you bring it back to the present, you can see how um, certain things get get distorted because I know in my own life that there have been things that I have said to myself about, you know, people in my life that I have, you know, in my past. And I said, you know, I thought certain things about them and how they treated me. And then I remember I just like opened a book and I found this letter, for instance, from one of those people. And it kind of, you know, blew a hole in my theory. It wasn't, it wasn't exactly how I thought. And that's because, and it kind of freaked me out because I'm like, I really believe that I had a very good handle on my perception of certain incidents. But you know what? We can be distorted. Even people who consider themselves very perceptive, they can have a sense of distortion because you know, when we're younger, we're coming from a certain perspective and just time can, you know, make us more aware of how we maybe misunderstood certain things, or even if we understood them correctly, we have a better uh, balanced perspective of other people. Because, you know, sometimes you may see your parents as gods, and then when you get older, you realize they're just regular people and they're very fallible. And then you can have, you can, you know, give them more leeway for being imperfect. And even, you know, that doesn't mean that um, you excuse bad behavior. I'm just, you, I think you know what I'm talking about. So this is about you going within yourself about things that, you feel have affected you in the past and, you know, kind of, um, looking towards yourself. That's what, that's what retrogrades are all about. But because Pluto is about transformation, it's really, um, you know, challenging yourself to transform, um, in spite of what has happened in the past. On the 7th, the new moon is at 18 degrees of Taurus, and of course, that is your opposite sign. So this is occurring in the seventh house of committed partnership. Now, it's always possible, and it's probable that some Scorpios have, in the last couple of years, have ended a, a, a marriage or the equivalent type of partnership uh, because there were eclipses in your sign and Taurus. And the new moon could be the divorce decree coming through or the moving van pulling up and you taking your stuff out of the apartment or condo or house. Um, it could be making uh, marriage arrangements or getting married. There are so many possibilities about what a new moon in the seventh house can be. So what I would just say in general is developments, new developments in relationships or potential commitment, committed partnerships. On the 15th, Mercury goes into this area. So, you know, <laughs> again, depending on what side of the aisle you're on, Maybe you're signing a, you know, Mercury can be documents. Maybe you're signing a marriage certificate or maybe you're signing a divorce certificate. Um, I, I uh, mentioned before that I took a picture a while ago. I don't know if I have it anywhere. I, it might be on Instagram. I'm not sure. But I took a picture of a car that that was decorated like, how they decorate during a wedding. 
and it said just divorced instead of just married. But they had everything that seemed exactly like a wedding thing. And I thought that was kind of cute. And, and, and kind of a wry statement on, you know, how, how these uh, concepts or the symbolism and concepts, how they can sometimes be uh, just that, they're, that they're not really the thing itself. A ceremony is not love. A ceremony is symbolic of the commitment of two people, but it's not the commitment itself. It doesn't, it doesn't uh, substitute for the actual commitment. You know, a person can be cheated on when they've been married for 20 years and they can ha a person can have a completely faithful partner and they have been living together for 40 years. Um, you, there are no guarantees with these kinds of things. Oh my gosh, I forgot I'm talking to a Scorpio. That, I'm sorry to, to, to uh, traumatize you because, and I'm, you know, I'm being facetious, but um, people, people like to do these things sometimes because they're hoping to seal the deal and the, that's, you know, if you, if you, if you get married because you just want to celebrate your love, to me, that's like the greatest, um, reason to do it, but not because you are hoping that it's going to keep the other person from cheating. So, Anyway, um, the seventh house can be legal affairs. So anything, a legal summons, a legal uh, matter that you have to go back and forth with, that could also be the case. On the 20th, the sun goes into that eighth house. So this is your domain, and this is something that would be very comfortable for you. On the 23rd, Venus goes in here. So this could actually be some kind of money that is coming from another party. This might be an inheritance. And, but again, if there's any kind of marriage that is dissolving, um, the, the shared resources aspect of it, you could be gaining from that somehow. On the same day, we have a full moon at almost three degrees of Sagittarius. And that for you is the second house of earned income. So both of these areas, and they are like, um, since Venus is at zero degrees of Gemini and, and uh, Sag is at almost three degrees, they are um, close enough together to form an opposition from those two money houses for you. So that sounds to me like some kind of money that you might be getting um, one way or the other. But um, maybe in both, I don't know if it would be both, uh, you know, just like a raise at work. And then, cause you know, with Mars in the sixth house, there might, you might be really like, getting a backbone and getting assertive. I, not that I think that Scorpio people need a backbone, but that's just an expression. If maybe you feel like you're not being paid as much as somebody else and you're like, kind of like fighting for your rights and then you get that. On the 25th, Jupiter goes here too. So boy, oh boy, oh boy. Um, yeah, I mean, you have the two benefic planets are both associated with money, Scorpio, in this house that is um, other people's money. So it is possible that in the next year you're going to, uh, if you have, if you don't receive it now, um, or maybe you, maybe this is just um, something a little something, something, something 
but that there's more to come with this. That's a possibility because Jupiter will be here for months on end. And I'm going to do a, a separate video um, about this Jupiter transit through uh, the sign of Gemini for all the signs. So stay tuned for that. But uh, yeah, I mean, um, this is also a great um, time period for you to study transformational material, anything alchemical, like, um, for instance, shamanism, um, Wicca. I don't really, for some reason, I just get like this resistance when I, when I talk about paganism, it's just something that, uh, <laughs> I think I was burned at the stake. So maybe I, I it's a sore subject for me, but I, I don't know. I don't really, I don't really resonate with it. But some of you might, and uh, anything that is magical, mystical, but especially, you know, associated with astrology, the, the occult, uh, tarot, um, channeling, or just transformational practices, tantric yoga, <laughs> that might be up your alley who knows okay that's what i have for you scorpio i hope that this resonated and if you would like a private reading i'm promoting my double um package deal readings called my deep dive readings which are an hour of needle chart analysis and an hour of astrological transits for the next 12 months for a special price because I offer those two readings separately and I, I do um, combine them in one package for a reduced price. And I have love readings and career life path types of readings and, and different types of readings like that too. You can find out more information at the link below. Thanks for listening. Bye.